This one. Well, today I've got my little Kubota tractor here in the shop, and we're going to do a little servicing on it. Well, not an in-depth service, but a basic oil change, uh, air filter, and we might even do a fuel filter there if we got one here in the shelf. Uh, pretty simple to do, but for those of you that just bought a Kubota and you're trying to figure out how you can service it yourself, uh, it's pretty simple. This video should help you quite a bit. Um, I'm just an old timer myself, but I've serviced pretty much all my tractors and lawnmowers and everything else since I was a kid on the farm. So, hope I like pass on some valuable information. Stick around and me show you how we're going to do it. But you got two clips here, one up here on top, and let me move that up. There we go. One up here on top, which I've already released, and you're going to have another one down here on the lower bottom. Release those. This is your cover. Pull your cover off. Set it to the side. Then all you're going to do is going to take the filter, shake it back and forth, and pull it straight out. Now while you've got this thing out of here, you may want to get you some compressed air. And I've already got some ready to go. And kind of blow inside here and clean this out. At the same time you're doing that, just to give you an idea of what may be in that filter, watch this. That's it right there. Nice, cool, clean cartridge. Open in. Goes in there. Fits over the thing real tight and push it in place. Next step, make sure you got these. Extend it out as so. This section goes down. It's got a slot. How see how it fits in there nice and neat. Flip that one, flip that one. Make sure this is open. Cleaned out. That's all there is changing the air filter. That was pretty simple. I think anybody can do that. Now then let's go over to the fuel filter. Well, next step, make sure you've got you a little rag or something handy. We're gonna remove that uh, fuel filter housing. And then we're gonna see if we can get this other. Let me get down here. It might even just be a little hard to get up. Hopefully you can see that better. There we go. We're going to remove this cartridge. Just like so. We're going to turn it counterclockwise if you're looking up from the bottom of it. We've got a few will come out of it. Ooh, look at that stuff in there. I don't know if you can see it. See that trash in there? That's a dirty fuel to fuel there somewhere. We've got a little O-ring. You may have to get a screwdriver or a pair of pliers or something to get that out of there. Now what I had to do to get this out of here is I had to take a pit, run it down the side here, snap this out just like so. Because you couldn't get that thing out of there. You may not see it, but there's trash all in that filter. So I got a dirty can of fuel somewhere. So it's always good. You're going to have this all dirty. This is going to need to be washed cleaned out before you put the other filter back in there. Now it's defeat the purpose of what you're trying to do here. Now when you're putting this filter back in there, you need to remember one thing. You pay close attention to the side of this filter, you'll see it's got little slots. Four of them. One, two, three, four. And inside the filter housing, you've got little, little wings. The filter wings inside here. The little protruding edges need to line up with the slots inside the filter housing. And then push it right down in place just like you see right there. So you get a nice clean filter housing. Do not forget to put the O-ring on there. You're going to have to have that O-ring on there to seal that off. And if you got any debris around the top, try to clean it off the best you can. Now let's put it back on the track.
All right. We've got the O-ring on top of the filter housing itself. The blind is back up in place right there. Keep it straight as you possibly can. Screw it clockwise if you're looking down from the bottom of it. And you'll see the fuel start coming out. The O-ring, as long as you got it good and straight, it should seal up. Wipe that off. Voila, you got your new fuel filter on there. Now then, let's change the oil. I'll just test to make sure you don't have any leaks on the oil filter. Crank the tractor up and let it run for two to three minutes. And then check it for leaks, which you shouldn't have any if you installed it properly. Now, the other reason I'm running the tractor is I want to make sure the oil is hot enough to pick out of it and replace. Uh, if there's any particles in the oil, it'll, it'll get in the oil, it'll suspend them without the oil, within the oil. That way you'll be able to clean all the dirty oil out of there or any particles that are in the, in the pan itself. If it's cold, you will not get everything out like you should. So make sure the tractor's warmed up to normal operating temperature. Then go ahead and drop your oil. It's probably not going to be the easiest thing seeing me do this. And you may have some blur because my arm's going to be right in the, in the way of where I'm going to be working. So uh, you'll have to bear with me. We'll try to get this done. Let's see if this is going to show up. Yeah, I believe you're going to be all right. First thing you're going to want to do is uh, get you a wrench and just in case this filter is too tight to get off of there and you can reach up in here, oh let me see if I can get there, reach it in there like so, I'm trying not to be in front of the camera, but that's not going to happen. Stick your wrench in from the back side and grip that thing just right, right there and you can turn it just like so, that way you got it loose. Go ahead and spin that old filter off of there. You're going to make a mess. It's going to get on the axle of the tractor. Just make sure you got your pan far enough over there to catch it. And uh, let it run down. Now's the time you can look at your other filter and make sure you got the correct one. There's a number right off to the side. Okay, something else you want to make sure you do. Just put your little oil around this lip of this thing, around this O-ring, this gasket. It don't make no difference, new oil or old oil, as long as you got some kind of oil so when you put it on there, it doesn't squeeze it down and uh, cause it to deform but it won't seal properly. Slug her up real good. Okay, that does it for the oil filter. Now let's drain the plug on and get the oil out of the crankcase. Something else I failed to mention earlier in the video, and I should have, but I'm going to do it now just in case. On the bottom of that pan, you actually have two drain plugs. You got one on this side, and you got one on this side, and they're both the same size. <clears throat> Let me see if I can get a wrench on this one. 19 millimeter, just like the other side. And even if you forget to drain this one, you're not going to get all the oil out. There's going to be still a little bit left in this side of the case. Yeah, I should have mentioned that, but I failed to. You know how it is when you get old. Should be some oil come out of this one. Be careful, because it should have a gasket. Brass one, copper. I don't know if you see it there, but there it is. I noticed that the other plug when I took it off didn't have that copper gasket. So I'm going to clean it up see if maybe it's stuck to the bottom of the oil pan itself. But yes, you do need a copper gasket on there to make sure that that does uh, seal off. You see, there wasn't a lot of oil, but that little bit of oil will make a difference. All right, to get to the filler cap, which really I should have taken this step before I pulled the drain plug, you're going to have a little boat right down in here. It's going to be blocking the light, but it's right down there in the front, and you're going to have one back here behind this shield. It's going to be really, really hard to get a shot of that without the camera blurring out. But it's going to be right back there in, in this area. So you need to take those out, then this little shield will come off, then you'll get to the filler cap, and you pull that out, and the oil will drain quite a bit faster. Alright, now you see we've got the shield removed, and uh, move your cap. See, if I'd have done that earlier, then it all would have drained out of the crankcase a lot faster. But you got to remove that shield I showed you in order to get access to that. 
So we'll finish letting that drain, then we'll put the plug back in place and start filling the, filling the crankcase pour. Well, I've decided to go ahead and change this hydraulic filter. Now, this is going to be, if you're sitting on the tractor to the right-hand side, underneath or behind these three lines right here, you'll see the gray filter in front of the tire. Now, if you're running a hydrostatic transmission, instead of me, I have an old clutch style. I'm an old fart and I like old style stuff. So I do have a clutch on this tractor. It's not the hydrostatic type of drive on it. You will have another filter on the opposite side as well. So this is one filter. You're going to have another one on the other side for the hydrostatic drive if you have the hydro drive tractor. Again, I have a clutch, so I don't have one filter. Now, I may have to get you a, a wrench to loosen this thing up, like so, to where you can spin it by hand. And uh, you'll want to get you some oil as soon as it starts coming out of there and add it to the, this, this seal right here on top of this one. I don't know how much is going to come out of here, uh, how much I'm going to lose, but I'm probably going to add a little bit. So you want to change it as fast as possible. Oh my god, it's coming out of it quick. Boy, you won't get much time to save much of that, will you? And I think I lost a lot. <sighs> Woo! That's not a fast one, not an easy one to do. Got to be pretty good at that. So I imagine I lost two or three quarts, so I'm going to have to check the hydraulic fluid and fill it back up now. Well, as I stated, I went ahead and I changed that hydraulic filter. He and I had one there. Now you want to know how to check it. If you're sitting on the, the tractor seat, if it's a boat of tractor, and like I said, L2501, this may apply to other series as well. You go right down here. Change this setting on this. Oh, go right down here a little lower. Left side of the tractor. Right, let's see if we can get a finger down to it. Right down in there. There's a sight glass right there. I'm gonna try to match that clutch a little forward. Maybe that'll help me some. No, that ain't gonna help. And now you see that sight glass right there? That's what you're looking for. You'll put fluid in there until that thing. It's almost to the top. Then you know you got plenty of hydraulic fluid in it. Easier said than done, but that's how you check your fluid once you replace your hydraulic filter. Now, to add it to it, all right, to add that fluid to it, right back here in the very back, you'll move this thing here, it says oil. It sits right underneath the seat, right in between the lift arms. That's where you fill your hydraulic fluid. And like I stated earlier, the sight glass is to let you know how full it is and when you got it full. Well, now that it's about 102 degrees, I finally got all the nasty, oily, greasy, dirty work done. Would I, would I buy another Kubota tractor? Oh, hell yeah. I really like my little Kubota. It's been a little workhorse. I probably do some bigger jobs with it than I should. But you know what it's easy to put on a trailer it's not too big you don't have to have a really big truck to haul it and it'll just about do any job i need it to do in my circumstances now i've got a box blade i brought me some forks off the skid steer put them on the front and i got an old disc and i got an old shredder well the shredder actually come with it it's not old it's new as a matter of fact i think but we're fixing to do some other work with it. We level a lots of dirt with it. That old box blade gets used a lot. And the front end loader also. Keep in mind now that once you get that oil changed and all the fluids changed, you still got to grease this thing. And it has a lot of grease fittings on it. So you may want to refer to your service manual for that. Remember this, the piece of equipment is only as good as you treat it. You service it and maintain it, it'll last you many years. Like I said, this little L2501 got about 146, 142, something like that on hours. And uh, I've serviced it since the day I've had it. Never had an issue with it. But you might check out my videos, because I did learn the hard way about this little yellow handle here. I got a video explaining what happened to me. I like to went crazy on that. But check that video out, you'll see what happened. Maybe it happened to you and you can resolve your problem without making your blood pressure go sky high. 
Stick around, I'll put some other videos out there on farm equipment, this old Kubota tractor, and many other things. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up, like, and subscribe.